Good morning and welcome to Hillhurst United Church. My name is Ann Yates LeBurge. I'm the executive director. And for the very first time ever, I am introducing Reverend Andrea Irwin. Thank you. Good morning, Hillhurst. She is first Sunday here. Yeah. Uh, we're recording. You'll notice that John Pentland is not here. Um, he is recovering from a medical emergency last week, which uh, we are, it's quite unfortunate, but uh, the timing is ridiculous that Andrea was here literally right the next day. Mm -hmm. So we're grateful for the timing. We are wishing John our best. Yeah. Uh, we, he is on a reduced schedule and you will see him later on in the service because he's gonna interview Andrea. Um, we are a church of whoever you are, wherever you're at, join us on the journey. It's what we're living for. And we have four core hospitality, uh, core four values. One is the first hospitality. And we've done nothing but hospitality this week. We have moved Andrea yeah. in and welcomed her with open arms. And welcomed her on social media and all of your stories and, and your welcoming messages have just filled her heart. So I think that's pretty neat. So yeah, thank you so much, everyone. I even got a fresh loaf of bread from one of you this week. And it really when when Anne says it's been heartwarming, it really has. So thank you so much. And then the next one is spirituality. Yes, spirituality. So starting this week, tomorrow night, in fact, Monday, January 17th at 7 p.m., our Spiritual Nurture new series is RAIN. And RAIN is a practice of mindfulness. And we're focusing on the work of Tara Brock in this particular series. And it stands for R, recognize, A, allow, I, investigate, and N, nurture. So each week we'll be focusing on one of those four steps of mindfulness. And you'll notice that the theme of our Sunday mornings and maybe even your mindful mornings on Mondays ties in with that. So whether you can be there on Monday nights or not, um, you will experience that that program. And Anne, where can people find that information? Hillhurstunited.life. Dot life. Amazing. Yeah. The life of the church is there. Well, the other core values are spirit, uh, social justice and risk taking. And it's been quite a risk this week. In fact, I actually broke our tripod right before this segment. <laughs> and Jumpa, our caretaker, is actually holding you, the Jumpa. tripod at this moment. <laughs> so we, uh, the other duties as required has been a, a big thing here, uh, yeah. this week as Sarah is doing the affirming later and Link is doing the, yeah. the, uh, land acknowledgement. It is all hands on deck here. So, um, anyway, welcome to Hillers United Church. And we're so happy to have you. And we're also happy to have uh, Andrea stepping in. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Hi, good morning. I'm Sarah. I'm the communications coordinator here at Hillhurst. And today I'm joining you from a cabin in the mountains. I'm very uh, lucky to be here. While our building is closed, I've snuck away to do some skiing and remote working. And I'm, I'm here today to share our affirming statement, which um, reminds us each Sunday our commitment to be an affirming church. And if you're joining us for the first time, maybe you're wondering what it means to be an affirming church. So our statement goes, Hillhurst United Church is an inclusive community of faith, following in the way of Jesus under the banner, whoever you are, wherever you're at, join us on the journey. We've been an affirming congregation for over 13 years, and we are a community that not only accepts each other as we are, but welcomes and celebrates the ministry and participation of all people. Whatever your age, gender identity, gender expression, health status, race, sexual orientation, ability, religious background, ethnic background, or economic circumstance. Know you are loved. God loves you. And we hope that you'll feel welcome here at Hillhurst United. And before I go, I just want to add in a little promo here for part of our affirming ministry, which is our Parents Plus group for parents um, or anyone on the parenting journey of uh, who are parenting members of the LGBTQ2IA plus community. And this month, they're having special guest Gio Dolcor, they, them, who is a family and marriage counselor. You can come and learn better ways to support yourself and your gender and sexually diverse family members. So all the details for that are at hillhurstunited.life. And that is this Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. on Zoom. From the span of reconciliation, we acknowledge that we live, work, and play on the Traditional territories of the Blackfoot Confederacy. Siksika, Kainai, Pikani, the Tsutina Nation, the Yahe Nakoda Nations, the Metis Region 3. And all the people who make their home on the 27 lands of southern Alberta.
We gather now, whoever and wherever we are, to join together as community and to draw our attention to the Spirit of God that is ever present and ever attending to us at all moments. Let us take a moment now and center ourselves, remembering that God is as close to us as the very air that we breathe. And we remember to pray, especially today, for our minister, John, who is recovering from a health emergency. We ask for strength and comfort in that process. And we also remember all of those today who are struggling with illnesses, disease, addiction, and for all of those who are struggling with the fear and anxiety of unforeseen circumstances. Eternal and ever-moving spirit among us, May we take pause in the midst of our daily journeys to notice you with us in it all. As we travel the road we find ourselves on, may your footsteps guide our footsteps. May your justice embolden our justice. May your mercy encourage our compassion. May your miracles inspire our doubt. And may your light illuminate our darkest nights. Amen. Let us join together as we sing the Lord's Prayer. There is no shortage of moments in the travels of our life in which we find ourselves taking a wrong turn, or at least I do. And in those not so finest of moments, the ones where maybe the road rage enables us to just put blinders on and not see any of the scenery around us in all of those moments, God loves us. There is no moment in which we are without that love, even when we aren't ready to hear it or listen to it, even when we're not sure we believe it, even when God's love tells us we are worthy, we are not alone, and there is nothing we can do to separate ourselves. So thanks be to God. So uh, 
last night I had a really great opportunity to meet with our finance team, uh, an incredible group of people that come together once a month. They are some of the most introverted behind the scenes people that you've ever seen, but um, they're doing an incredible job to keep us on track financially um, as, as stewards of the, the money that you are constantly giving. Um, and I had the privilege of them telling me that we ended up in a really great position for uh, 2021 uh, financially. And I just wanted to say, take a moment and say thank you for that. Thank you for coming forward. Thank you for giving your, your time, your treasure, and your talent um, specifically to help us grow this church, grow this community, and nurture all that we are touching. So that is, that is exactly why I wanted to stand here today and just say thank you. Um, there's many opportunities to give, um, and we, we encourage you to step in however you can, whenever you can, to help heal Hershey United Church. So on the screen, you'll see many ways to give your offering. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Look who I have with me. Finally, a uh, long-awaited arrival of Andrea Irwin. Uh, we are in downtown Calgary, a beautiful uh, winter day. It's, I don't know, and since you've been here, it's gone from minus 39 to plus 10. And yeah. look at you, you're wonderfully welcomed in Calgary. It's, I won't <laughs> say it's been a warm welcome, but it's, not, it's been a welcome. <laughs> it's, been a, it's, it's a dry cold here. That's right, it's a dry cold. Dry cold. I just want to say as we begin, thank you so much for your emails and uh, support as I move through my uh, getting better phase. I'm doing, uh, my doctor says, do things like walk, uh, have fun and simplicity. So those all fit today because we're going to be walking about. And here we are uh, in front of uh, the device to root out evil. Uh, this this uh, upside down church, we're just going to call it, was in yeah. Vancouver. It was. And it got here before you. You didn't bring it with you. I did not. A bit too heavy. Yeah, but we thought it was such a wonderful place to begin this conversation with uh, Andrea, our new minister here, uh, because Hillhurst United Church has a reputation for being a little bit upside down. And never heard that before. Never heard that before. We tend to take things over and dump them and see what's there. Mm -hmm. And we're so glad that you're joining us uh, at Hillhurst. And Eugene as well, her French bulldog, is like the best thing ever. His hair is on my coat. <laughs> yeah, he, he goes with us everywhere. So, Andrea, you said yes to come to this upside-down church in this okay. upside-down city at Hillhurst United Church. The, the first question I got to say is like, why? <laughs> 
That's an important question. An important question. I, we've only worked together for about a week now. Yeah. And I don't know if you've picked up on this yet, but I'm, I'm a bit of a weird individual. I don't, you know, I don't like to go with the <laughs> grain. I kind of like to be the black sheep. I like to do things a little differently. I have to stand out. So this church to me, <laughs> I, is it too soon to say that you're weird? Weird and black sheep and upside down. Pretty yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. So this church to me, I have just seen you be yourselves in the world for as long as I've been a member of the United Church. Hillhurst has been Hillhurst in the world. And like attracts like, I've seen you, you know, do things with the guidance of the spirit in a way that no other community has. I have seen you stand up when others have stayed seated. I've seen you stay closed when others have opened. I've seen you be loud when others have been silent, be, you know, righteously indignant when other people have just been too timid to say anything. And I think that is the best kind of weird. I don't, I don't want to be normal if that's what it's all about. Good. Weird black sheep upside down. That's Hillhurst. That's and, Hillhurst. And if that's the new you, vision statement, yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Forget the values. That's who we are. Yeah. Well, we're so glad to start our conversation here uh, from downtown. We're going to, I thought, you know, Andrew needs to know that one of the things we do so well is, uh, you know, as a community is walk, as engaged in the city and in public places. So we're going to go on a short walk back to Hillhurst. Uh, so stick with us as we go. We're beginning at the Upside Down Church. Anne is pointing us to walk. This way. Okay. So we've skated our way to this bench. Yeah. Uh, Slip inside. Yeah, exactly. That's one of the things you got to be careful about in this city. <laughs> Noted. We're here in front of the Simmons building. Got a great rooftop patio. Not open right now, but will be. Uh, we're on the bow. Great river that people enjoy floating down, swimming down, uh, paddling down. Super fun. That's right. that's to be in the future. A few months. Yeah, a few, few months. months. Yeah, no. Not long. But here we are. Yeah. And it's Sunday morning, so we better talk church, hey? I, it's a good uh, maybe idea. Maybe even throw in some Bible. One of the things I've noticed uh, is is uh, people, some people carry a Bible. Yeah. Some people use a Bible on their phone. Other people have it on their skin, which would be you. Uh, I noticed the other day on your wrist, I said, what's yeah. that? And you told me about it. So tell folks about it. Yes. Yeah, so I have a tattoo on my wrist. That is my, I call it my secret code for my favorite Bible verse. Uh, funny story. I actually heard a sermon preached with this as a title. And as soon as the sermon ended, it moved me so deeply that I went to a walk-in tattoo parlor and got it on my skin. So careful what you preach. It could turn into a tattoo. Buffalo is going to be across the arms of so many people, John. So what <laughs> so, is it? So this tattoo is a secret code for my favorite verse in the Gospel of Luke, and it is the call story, the first call story of the first disciples. And this story is one of the very few stories that's actually featured in all four Gospels. They tell it a little differently, but Luke is my favorite for a reason. So we have Jesus. He is teaching on the shores of the Gennesaret. And I... I like to speculate with what goes through Jesus's mind. It's called a fact I made up. I have a lot of those. I'll always disclaim. Um, but this is the Andrea Irwin translation. So Jesus is teaching. The crowds are pressing in on him. And he gets a little <laughs> exasperated, maybe. He sees a boat out on the water. And he's like, I'm going to go and get in that boat. So Jesus goes out. And in the boat is Simon and his brother, Andrew. And they have been fishing all night. And I'm sure their faces just show their disappointment. You put in a long day of work and you have nothing to show for it. These gentlemen had no fish whatsoever. And Jesus comes on board. And before turning around and continuing his teaching to the people on the shores, he says to the two fishermen, throw down your nets, cast down your nets. And they kind of look at him. And I can just imagine how frustrated they, like you with Anne, John, maybe, <laughs> how frustrated they must be with this direction. And one of them looks to Jesus and says, you know, we've been fishing all night. We've caught absolutely nothing. I don't know what makes you think that us throwing down the nets again is going to do anything differently. But because you say so, I will. And he throws the net down over the side of the boat. And when they pull it up, there are so many fish that the boat almost begins to fill with water. And that is the story of how they decided to start following Jesus for the first time. And there's a sentence in that particular version of the reading, because you say so, I will. And on my arm is written B-Y-S-S-I-W, because you say so, I will. Because you say this, I will trust you. Because I have witnessed you here, I will follow. Because you say so, I will. And that is... 
really a great, uh, a great story for me and my own personal call, but one, uh, this is one of the ways that I just have that permanent reminder with me all the time. You know what's neat? I didn't know, I did not know that until oh. just this now. What's so interesting to me is uh, two things. One, mm -hmm. that story is the John story, John 21, yes, which is the basis of Fishing, fishing tips, tips book, where there's the fish count in that uh, story in John's gospel is 153 fish were mm -hmm. counted by the accountant who was on the boat. And 153, he added all up is nine, which became the nine tips yeah. for fishing tips, yeah. which is part of that story. The other is, uh, you said, I will. Yeah. And last week I was talking about we will. We will. Uh, so I had no idea that that mm -hmm. was that story yeah. from that gospel. So, you know, one of the things about the Bible is it's, I think it's all about call. Mm. If, you, if you look at the people all the way along in the story, they're all called in some yeah. way, whether it's Abraham and Sarah, uh, uh, Moses, David, uh, Esther, mm -hmm. Ruth, all the way yeah. through. Uh, everyone experiences, I believe, a sense of call about mm -hmm. who they are, what we're called to be, who we're called to be. Uh, and so when I think about that and you're, you're coming here, what, how does call fit into this? Because people will uh, have a sense that, what is my calling? When you think mm -hmm. about your call, how does call work for you yeah. in your life and your spiritual journey? I've had a complicated relationship with the word call because I think when I was younger, I assumed that call meant you had to have this burning bush moment or you had to hear God's voice. And, and I remember being, you know, in my early twenties, kind of, what do I want to do with my life? Um, I remember being a little bit angry that I hadn't had an experience like that. And what I realized, so <laughs> something, you know, nothing about John, I am a PK. I'm a preacher's kid. <laughs> My dad was an Anglican priest. And if you know anything about preacher's kids, there's kind of, well, they go one of two directions. You have the typical halo preacher's kid and you have the other preacher's kid that goes, you know, the other direction. And I was the other direction. So working for the church was not something that ever crossed my mind. It wasn't something that I, I desired for myself. It wasn't something I felt any sort of sense of gravitational pull towards. And so I joke, of course, growing up in the church, you have people wanting you around. You have people saying, oh, you should get more involved in this. You have the voluntold. We hear all the time in the church, you've been voluntold to do something. And I experienced a lot of that. But I didn't take that to mean call. And as I got older, what I realized, the joke that I tell people is that the phone was always ringing. I just got so annoyed one day that I actually answered it. And call for me, I've come to recognize as the wisdom and the voices of the people around me pointing to certain gifts, saying, this is how you best serve people. And this is how I best see the divine in you. This is where you radiate. This is where you come alive. And this is what has made a difference in other people's lives. I haven't heard that directly from God, but I have heard that time and time again from a community of God's people around me. And that's really how I experienced call. That's how I, you know, started working for the church was a literal phone call from someone who I really respected saying, we have a job and we think you'd be great at it. When I, uh, when I started seminary, it was the same thing. It was a phone call from someone who I really respected saying, Hey, uh, what's the harm? Like you should go. When I started seminary, it was, Hey, you know, have you ever thought about ordination? And it's been one person after another, literally calling me to uh, to something greater than myself. So call for me has very much been um, a community effort. Well, you know, what's neat in that is that uh, I think we're called again and again mm -hmm. and again, right? Yeah. It's not, it's rarely, unless you're Paul, uh, you know, the sky's opening and, and blinded mm -hmm. by the light, mm -hmm. if you will. That's right. Uh, it, for some it is. And I, and I honor that, that mm -hmm. miraculous. Yes. Sometimes it's a nudge or a poke or an annoyance. <laughs> Uh, and we sometimes stick our heels in. And I think what you're sort of suggesting is there was many different calls along the way mm -hmm. uh, that sometimes we resist and perhaps mm -hmm. eventually discover it was the right thing to do. Yeah. So call for you has been sort of a ongoing process. It has been. And I think that I, I do think, like you said, that we are called to things over and over again. And oftentimes we are called to move on from places. I have um, I have another tattoo on my other wrist. <laughs> Apparently I need a lot of notes to self. I don't know what this is How about. How many limbs do this you one, have? <laughs> that's right. I'm running out. Uh, this one simply says yes on it. And yes, for me, I actually, I also love acronyms. So the fact that we're doing RAIN this week is really exciting. Um, yes to me stands for you embody 
spirit. And I honestly believe that there is a divine presence that is pulling each and every one of us and that we can sense that in our bodies. And one of my experiences, I remember having a conversation maybe last year, it was in the pandemic with a colleague of mine and uh, Reverend Peter Short, an ex-moderator of the United Church. And one of the things that he said that I will never forget was that sometimes our soul moves on without us and beckons to us to come and join it. And I have experienced in my life times when it has felt like the spirit maybe has has left my body. Maybe that's when, you know, I've experienced complacency or uh, resentment. Maybe that's a numbness. Maybe things aren't feeling fresh anymore. Maybe the, the inspiration is gone. The wind is out of my sails, for example. Um, and that's when I, I think of what, what Peter Short says. And, and I feel like my soul has, has left my body and it is my job to go and find where it has gone. And it is always beckoning and my body, my body always leads me back home to it. Maybe that's what they mean by an out of body experience. Ah, <laughs> your soul, maybe your soul I haven't body. levitated yet, but, <laughs> but maybe that's not what it's about. Yeah, no, I love that. I mean, I, cause we talk lots about soul. Yeah. Are we soul? Do we have a soul? Yeah. Does our soul lead us and call us? Yeah. Uh, I think that's, mm -hmm. I think that's true. Right? And, uh, there's a truth to it that we eventually follow. Yeah. Eventually. Eventually, Whether it's annoyance yeah. or otherwise, we can be annoyed into a call. I think so. Absolutely. And and I think sometimes just a sense of I wasn't annoyed into this call. Yeah, Let yeah. me just put that disclaimer out there. <laughs> Even minus thirty nine hasn't for that. annoyed you. You still smiled. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. Mister, it was frozen. Well, I think calls are such an important thing to think about. It's not just ministers that do call. I think we're all called. Absolutely. And I think call is where we, where our gifts are best of service to the community around us. So we talk about people having purpose in this world. And, and I think that you can be called to be an artist. I think you can be called to lay bricks. I think you can be called to build anything beautifully, but it is how is what you are doing, serving the wider community, serving the world around you and therefore serving God. I got to tell you this past week, I mean, I saw a call in the healthcare workers, oh, whether, yeah. you know, whether it was the porter, yeah. uh, whether it was the person pushing me around, uh, whether it was the nurse or doctor, yeah. uh, and, and even people at 7-Eleven. I, I really think we have to honor and lift up yeah. the fact that we're all called in many different ways. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're delighted that you answered the call uh, to you. be here among us Thank in you. our upside down frigid world. <laughs> uh, so let's, let's move along the way. Let's. Okay. This way. This way. Okay. So we've been, you know, talking about spiritual journey. We've been journeying to this place. We have. And indeed life is that. I was thinking, you know, all of us have highs and lows on our spiritual journey. When you think about that, mm -hmm. what's, what was maybe a low or a high along your way? Yeah. So uh, you're the first person to ever ask me that question. Surprisingly, actually. Um, I, a low for me. So in my early 20s, I left the church. And something that it's important for you as a colleague in this community to know about me is that I am absolutely a feeler. I love to emote. Um, I love to express the way that I'm feeling, whether that's crying, whether that's dancing, whether that's laughing. I'm a huge laugher. Um, so when I stop feeling things, that is an indication to me that something is really wrong in my life and, and kind of with my heart and in my spiritual life. And when I left the church, I think I realized um, I'm a cradle Christian. I grew up in the church. And so these stories were just a part of who I was. I never asked a single question about, about this guy we called Jesus. I never asked a question about God. I never had any doubts because this was just a fluency that I had. And when I realized that this story didn't feel special, it wasn't making me feel anything, I left the church. And that would be a low for me. And my spiritual journey and kind of getting to a higher ground than that, um, has really been a journey of re-enchanting myself to the Christian faith. I uh, This is weird stuff that we believe in, um, and there are no answers. And the fact that I could be numb to all of that for the majority of my growing years was startling and disappointing to me. And so the journey back towards kind of this re-enchantment um, and just allowing myself to be surprised and awed by these things that we 
we talk about and, and the stories that we read and the experiences that people have um, has been what that journey has been all about for me. So, so, so that re-enchantment creates a high, if you will. It does. Like I, yeah. I, um, I feel God's presence in my life again, and I don't know that it was ever missing, but I, I wasn't paying any attention to it whatsoever. I will say, however, just a year ago, al- almost a year ago, I was ordained. Um, what is time anymore? It was definitely only five months ago. <laughs> uh, and the feeling of standing up there with my mother and with my mentor, Reverend Deb Bowman, um, having their hands laid on me as I was ordained and this responsibility being kind of bestowed on me and being prayed over. That was, I never thought up until the night before I was ordained, I wasn't sure that I was going to be ordained. And that was definitely a high for me. I stood up a different person. You know, as you say that, I remember in 88, my ordination, I can still occasionally feel the, the weight. Of they were hands. heavy. Yeah. On I was shoulders. shocked. Yeah. yeah. It's a, that's why the laying on of hands is such an important part of our baptismal, right? Yes. You know, the touch of that. And sometimes you feel the weight uh, that is bo- both bo- burden and joy of, of that. It's a so, great way to put it, burden and joy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, well, we're going to, uh, we're going to walk uh, over to the church through uh, the Peace Bridge. Nice. And uh, we'll, we'll meet Anne back at the church. Great. All right, let's do it. Let's go. Okay, so here we are. We've uh, made our way along the boat and we're at Hillhurst United Church. Some people uh, call this their home, like a spiritual home, a place where they feel at home. And I think, you know, theologically and spiritually feel at home in them, in their souls here. Um, One of the things that's really important to us is uh, music. Yeah. So I was thinking about this. What, what, we try to bring sort of cultural music and then sacred music, if they're all sacred, but church music, we'll say. Mm-hmm. What's that, What's one of your favorite songs that's not in a hymnal? Oh, one of my favorite secular pieces. So I'm a huge Bruce Springsteen fan, and I have always dreamt. Oh, I don't know if I should play my card this soon. I've always dreamt of using Bruce Springsteen, The Rising, in an Easter service. I don't know if you know the story behind this song, but the story is written about all of the emergency workers, all the firefighters ascending the Twin Towers after they were hit when everyone else was trying to leave the Twin Towers. And this, it's got beautiful theological imagery in it. It's a rockin' tune because it's Bruce, and it just, oh, it makes me feel all the things. Nice. I mm-hmm. saw him in concert in 1981. You weren't born. I, you was, weren't born. I was not born. <laughs> He's on my bucket list. There you go. In yeah. Montreal, I saw him. Yeah. Wow. Excellent. Awesome. Mine would be uh, Five for Fighting uh, Superman, but that's another story. <laughs> so what about uh, your heart song? Like we have some piece of music that just stir our heart, awaken us. Yeah. Uh, what, what's your heart song? So there's a piece of music. I didn't realize it was in our Moy Voices hymnal. I heard it when I was probably... 10 years old, I snuck out of my regular Wednesday night Anglican youth group and went to the Catholic youth group down the street. So rebellious, so rebellious. (laughs) A lot of stories about that. And I heard a piece of music played at the front of the sanctuary amidst all of the smells and bells. It was Better Is One Day. Uh, The artist was Matt Redman, I think, who originally recorded it, but they had this group that was playing it. And it was the first time that I heard a piece of church music surround me in a place where I had chosen to be. And it really just made me feel. I've already talked about how much I love to feel. And this piece of music for me today is a reminder that wherever I'm at on my journey, if I stop and sit in the presence of God, if I stop and try and remind myself to watch for God in the world around me, um, I, I feel like I've come home wherever I am, even if it's not a physical space that I, that I remember, if it's here where I am brand new and have already started to feel so much at home, this recognition that God, that spirit is present, um, that's home for me. And this song reminds me of that. Nice. Yeah. I don't know who said it, but I think God wants to come alive in our bodies mm-hmm. and uh, body, mind, spirit. So welcome home to this church. Welcome to our community as you begin your ministry Thanks. with us. We are so glad you're here. Welcome home. Thank you so much. Peace to you.
Well, thanks, John and Andrea. And it's just, it's such a pleasure to have you here, Andrea. We've been looking forward to this for a minute. So it's awesome. Thank you for sharing your heart with us. I, I love how much the presence of God has come up in the last couple of weeks. And how, yeah, like Andrea said, it, the presence of God along the journey is always creating that sense of home. So this song, I love the lyrics of this song. You know, just better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. And the beautiful thing about us in our tradition is we understand that the Spirit is always present to us, that God is always present to us, no matter where we are. So this becomes not a prayer of trying to get somewhere, but a prayer of awareness, of a deeper awareness of God's presence in our everyday walking around life, creating a sense of home in us, through us. So let's pray this together. How lovely is your dwelling place, O oh Lord Almighty. My soul longs and even faints for you.
The spirit bring us joy mm-hmm. Cause better is one day uh, uh. We celebrate your presence The spirit bring us joy Bring us joy Oh Yeah Mm. I hope you're feeling a little joy today.